I figured I'd inaugurate this portion of the show with a quick uh, statement of purpose. You know, why am I doing this? What do I hope to accomplish? That kind of thing. Now, the short answer, of course, is that my wife bought me a pretty sick microphone for Christmas, and if I don't do something with it, she'll stop buying me cool stuff. But that only answers the question, why a podcast? Not, why an atheism podcast? So, why dedicate oneself to a negative proposition? Why do an anti-thing? And why do a podcast about something I don't believe? After all, when somebody accuses atheism of being akin to another religion or, you know, just as faith-based, atheists are usually quick to shut them down with something like bald isn't a hair color, right? Or celibacy isn't a sexual position or not collecting stamps isn't a hobby. And those statements are pithy and they refute the claim at hand, but they're not exactly accurate because atheism is a thing. It, it, it is something. There's no not collecting stamps blogs or conferences or loosely knit political organizations. Nobody would go to the time and effort of recording a bi-weekly podcast, say, on not collecting stamps. So why do it at all? I mean, wouldn't it be enough to just put up one episode where I say, you know that whole God thing? I'm not buying it. Well, maybe that is enough, but truth be told, I can't leave it there. You know, when I see a Facebook post where somebody is thanking God for their child's medicine instead of thanking the doctors and scientists that actually, you know, did the work, when I hear some bigoted, homophobic pedophile lecturing the nation on morality on my television, when I see a grown adult, uh, you know, a person with otherwise fully functioning gray matter that still believes in angels or hell or the power of prayer, when I see legitimate fields of scientific study stifled while we get God's permission, when I see celibate men opining on women's reproductive rights, or I see anybody in their right minds listening to those opinions, when I see otherwise loving people disowning their gay offspring because Jesus don't like that butt sex, when I see legislators that would take more stock in a piece of pre-scientific literature than they would in genuine actionable data, when I see a, a child, an innocent victim of this, who's trapped in a family that has one of those weird religions where everybody wears the same hat, that's when I can't hold my tongue. That's when I can't ignore the 800-pound gorilla in the nave. This is all nonsense. It's all a bunch of bumbling, incoherent, disjointed, logically inconsistent, internally inconsistent, fanciful brain vomit from Bronze Age beatniks. I mean, think about it. Imagine that we're in some religion-free zone, and somebody starts telling you stories, and in his stories, you know, there's a part where a dude's talking to a burning bush, and another part where a guy turns the stomach of a living whale into a Holiday Inn Express. How do we then assess this dude and his stories? Do we take this guy seriously? Do we turn to him now for retirement advice? I mean, come on. But for some reason, even the most flagrant departures from sanity get a pass when it comes to faith in this culture. Any misogynistic, Stone Age, immoral notion is completely permissible as long as you play the get-out-of-reason-free card. What's more is that we have this enigmatic social condition that says that the more asinine the claim, the more taboo it is for me to challenge it. It's perfectly acceptable for somebody to claim that God must have had a really good reason for letting all those kindergartners get shot. But it's a total breach of etiquette for me to respond with an accusatory, what? Now I know some Christians are going to do that flabbergasted double-take at what I just said. They're going to say that that statement is ignorant of all the victories that the atheists and the free speech advocates have won over the centuries. They've got to feel like they're losing, and in a sense they are. Look, Matt Stone and Trey Parker haven't been burned at the stake yet, I'll admit that. Making fun of religion has become something of a national pastime, and we've come a long way. But there's still a lot to say. So the hippie walks up to me, throws his dreadlocks over one shoulder, and he says, You know, man, when we die, we'll all be like gods. And I said, Yeah, we won't exist. <laughs>